That's what's important. So I listen to experts when they are right. Say, how are you going to know that an expert is right? Good. That's why as ministers of God, you've got to use your spirit. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Otherwise, we'll be deceived in life all the time. All the time. I mean, just look what has happened now. You, I told you this, and now we can see what the WHO has said. I showed it to you from their own website. Then I just told you about what the CDC just said. I told you before. So a lot of the things I told you previously, they're coming, they're coming into. So if there's anything else that they haven't, they haven't come into, they either will or the thing will prove itself. See? So these are realities. These are realities. And, um, and that's why God's people should not be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. Don't be afraid. I told you the COVID-19 was not near as fatal as they said it was. It's turned out exactly as I said. Nothing to be afraid of. So all those steps that were taken were not necessary at all. They destroyed the nations for nothing. They destroyed the nations for nothing. And, and why? Because of the demon spirits that were motivating these things, inspiring these things, instigating this evil. I'll show you something from the Bible. I think it's good for you to, to look through these. Let's look at what the Bible tells us. I mean, even some medical doctors, I, I, was, I was surprised. A few medical doctors said, well, you know, one of the ways that people can handle this thing, they should wash their hands, and they should cover their faces with the mask, and they, should, and they were just recommending all these things. I thought, where's his brain gone? I thought the guy went to school. No science. I thought, What? Did he say he's a medical doctor? You know, there are people who are used to just receiving guidance for their medical practice. They just get it from, their, from the medical association or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They just send them and, and then they just follow. They never, they, they've never in their lives questioned anything. You know, they, 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 they just never questioned anything. If tomorrow they found a newspaper Airplanes don't fly anymore. They can't fly anymore because the air has gone bad. They're going to believe it. No, they're, just, they're just used to following whatever it is. They say, oh, did you see what I just said on the newspaper? I just, I just, I just, I just saw they, they, they said airplanes can't fly anymore. Air has gone bad. Very sad. Pick up the phone and they start calling their friends. Airplanes can't fly anymore. They can't fly anymore. Why? Air's gone bad up there. It's just, you know, it's just the way they are, they are wired. They grew up taking whatever. Like the guy who says, uh, X, Y, Z is so and so. You say, how to find out? I read it on the internet. I read it on the internet. Who wrote it? He doesn't know. He thinks once you see it printed, it's truth. They were never taught to examine. That's why the Bible tells us study, study, search. Try the spirits. Examine. These are words you find in the Bible. That's why when you know the scriptures, you can never be fooled around by just anything. No way. 
Because the Bible teaches you how to search, how to check, how to try, how to examine, how to study. All these things come to us from the Bible, the Word of God. And you look at all those before us, all the amazing saints of God before us, all the men and women of God before us, look at them. They were tough, they were bold, they could ask questions. They even asked God questions. So I said, I want to read to you. From, I begin with an area that we've read again and again. From Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Next verse. He says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Think about it. He says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But again, spiritual forces, spiritual personalities. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins got about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. How powerful this is. He shows us how to put on the whole armor of God. And from the list of this armor, you can tell it's not against flesh and blood. Not against flesh and blood. Spiritual forces. And once I found out that there were spiritual forces responsible for this evil, I'd take action. And you better take action. You better do something. I'll show you more. Now, you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse number 3. And I'd like us to, to read... Well, let's, let's go King James first. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hmm. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of human understanding. They're not man-made. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Look at the Amplified Version. From verse 3. For though we walk, live in the flesh, in the body, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh, and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical 
weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow. Overthrow. Notice that. For the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Fortresses and structures of evil powers. We can overthrow them. We can destroy them. Another version says to demolish. We've got weapons. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God is expecting us to use them. He's expecting us to use them. Let me read something else to you in 2 Kings. Chapter 6. It's going to be fairly long, so I'm going to be reading from verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take things every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was fell in the beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Wonderful. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. The king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for see that the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel, now I want you to notice, it wasn't the director of national intelligence that sent a message to the king of israel it wasn't the the um the secretary of defense that sent a message to the king of israel it was a prophet of god it was the prophet of god that knew the strategy of the enemy not the experts. And here's the difference between a man of God and, in, and anybody else. A man of God must hear from God and speak for God. It's important. I'm thinking, what were the apostles like? What were the prophets like? What was Jesus like? I can imagine Abraham trying to get, get, get instructions from, 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 from the experts. Abraham? He would have never gone where God said to go. He would have never gone. What about Isaac? He would have never found water. Nobody could get water. They dug up everywhere, couldn't find water. But Isaac digs and he gets it. Because a prophetic direction, prophetic guidance. Then you've got Jacob. What about the war against Amalek? Moses lifts his hands, Israel wins. His hands go down. 
Amalek wins. Then they notice it's the hands of Moses. Even though the soldiers were out there fighting and Joshua was leading the battle, they realized it was the hands of Moses on the mountain that won the battle. And Aaron and Hall got his hands up to keep them from coming down. And as long as they held up those hands, Israel won the battle. The battle was not won by the expert's advice, but by prophetic guidance. My brothers and sisters in Christ, prophetic guidance is still what God is leading his church with today. He would never change that. Imagine the experts and what advice they would have given to Moses at the Red Sea. Imagine the experts what they would have said when the people were bitten by snakes. Prophetic guidance said, make a brazen serpent, lift it up on a pole, and tell the people that have been bitten to look up. That's, I mean, think about it. What? What, what doctors will give such instructions? No doctor would. Experts would not give that. So, when you say churches should listen to expert advice, you're destroying the churches. You're destroying their faith in God's word. You're destroying their faith in God's word. It's better you say to the church, don't open until I say so, than you say. When the experts tell us, we're going to do it. No way. No way. God's people should listen to God's voice. To God's ministers who are speaking to them God's word and the ministers should never refer them to expert advice experts have said the man is going to die when we said no he'll live and then he lived and didn't die that's a man of God. I've, of, I've often said there's a difference between preachers and men of God. The Bible shows us there's a difference. A man of God is different from a preacher. And I, and I don't mean that negatively. Not at all. And I'm, and I'm not criticizing at all. There are preachers and there are men of God. They're not the same. Look at your Bible. You will see they're not the same. A man of God is not the same as a preacher. Okay? A man of God is heaven sent. God sent. Not just to preach. No. God sent as a light, as a guide, as a voice. Remember that. He may not even be a good preacher. I have a question for you. How many sermons did you read from Elisha? How many sermons of Elijah do you have? They were men of God. And yet you don't have their writings. So it's not, it's not about, um, you, you can be a great preacher because that is, that is your calling. You see, you can have that gift.
to preach. Because the Bible says, how can they preach except they be sent? So there are those who are sent to preach. But that's very different from being described as a man of God. Of course, it is generally used by everybody that anyone who's, who's preaching is a man of God or is a woman of God. But if you study the Bible, it's not really so. There are differences. There are differences. And that's why we must not criticize others or get upset when they say things that we don't agree with. We have to understand that sometimes their training, their background, their maturity. You, you are not, you're not sent to preach because you're mature. It's a calling. You may not even know the Bible and yet God sent you to preach. So what does God expect you to do? To start learning the Bible. You see. So you're, you're not sent to preach because you know the Bible. So you have to then learn. See. So these are areas where there can be mistakes and problems. So that's why um, you may not have I mean, every minister may not agree with some other minister on these subjects. Or even me. I mean, some other minister may not agree with me, but that's not a problem. I, I've never taken issue with that. I, I really don't care about that. That's not a problem at all. It doesn't change anything. See, it doesn't change anything. And, and so, um, we can always accept one another in spite of those seeming differences because after a while these areas of ignorance get to be resolved at a point which works <laughs> i'll never forget there's a um pastor benny Hien, he was having a, a program when i think he would remember this so he was having a, a this is your day program so he had this guest the man's pastor now he's gone to heaven now and uh, this was his special guest on the program that day. And after introducing him and, and uh, letting him say a few things, the man said to him, face to face, he said, I never liked you. I never wanted to have anything to do with you. Oh, I heard a lot about you, but I just didn't like you. This man was a, a very popular preacher in the United States. He was on TV every day. And yet, he didn't like Pastor Benny. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Why? But uh, it happens. It happens. I was surprised, but, you know, lessons for life. <laughs> and Pastor Benny was like, oh. <laughs> you know, he's looking at him like, you know. <laughs> thank God, thank God. At least the man got through eventually because um, his life changed. And that's why he was on the program. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, so we're still reading. Where